All right, today I'm gonna to be testing out the AX1 Beavercraft Axe. This is uh, something that I've never used before. I've been eyeing it for a little while, ever since I first tried the uh, $13 carving knife that uh, kind of blew my mind. Not a lot that you can get that's better than this knife here for 13 bucks. I don't really think there's much that competes with it in that price range, but uh, anyway, I'm hoping that the axe performs up just as well. It's again in the lower end of the price range of European made hand forged axes. I think it's like $70 on sale right now at Amazon. So uh, I figured I'd give it a shot. My expectations are not very high because $70, that's not a lot of money. Let's set this down on the table and take a look at it. All right, so nothing too fancy uh, as far as the packaging goes. Pretty straightforward. Only appropriate that we use the Beavercraft knife to open it up. I think that's all that's keeping it together. All right. Pretty minimal packaging, but uh, again, what do you expect for that price? Looks like a little bit of residual oil. Maybe rust prevention, I'm guessing. Oh yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> it's actually really pretty cool looking. It's got like a very rustic look. The actual like, uh, let's see if I can get this to focus. The mal the sort of back end of the, the axe is uh, very, it's almost pitted looking, which is in a way kind of neat. It looks very kind of old world. A little bit of an asymmetrical grind on the butt. Let me just say, first of all, I'm not an axe expert. You guys know me, I'm a wood carver. This is, however, a carving axe, and so it's kind of my foray into carving axes. Um, what I am familiar with, however, though, is good steel. So that's what we're after finding out, is if this thing has good steel. Got the Beavercraft logo. It's cool that it actually comes with a leather uh, belt, uh, kind of belt thing there, that's sweet. It's about Beavercraft. All right. All right, so it's a very short bevel. Um, probably one of the first things I'll do to this um, is regrind this to be a little bit of a flatter profile uh, if I'm gonna use it for carving. Because this is a very um, kind of, uh, you know, short bevel. In other words, this is not very long. Right? The longer this is, the more uh, easily it will move through the wood. So, but surprisingly polished. I mean, it's got a polished edge to it. And the handle, it's comfortable. Uh, it's a little small at the end. Could have, it could widen out maybe a, t a tad bit at the, at the end. But it's, uh, it doesn't seem like it's moving. <laughs> it shouldn't be, right, at this point. That's for sure. But we'll see how it does. Uh, let's take this out to the field and test it out. All right, so I've been playing with this thing for the last, uh, I don't know, half hour or so. And uh, one thing I'll tell you about it is uh, it's held an edge fairly well, right? There's not a lot of reflection from the light on the edge. A little bit of uh, reflection here. There's some kind of uh, denting, um, a little bit of denting. Who knows if I'm hitting anything hard, you know, rock or whatever in this stump. But most likely not. Um, but it's not really, uh, it's not disappointing. You can tell it's been tempered and it's holding an edge fairly well for the, you know, again, for the cost of this thing. It's 
it's pretty pretty uh, substantial. I'm gonna kind of not jump to any conclusions though and put it through its paces a little bit more. I brought out uh, Beavercraft's uh, Sloyd knives as well. This is their Sloyd knife and this is their uh, uh, spoon carving knife, their scoop knife. So I was playing with those a little bit too. Similar problem to the uh, axe in that uh, the metal seems uh, surprisingly decent. It's just that the bevel is a little short so they could use to grind it a little flatter. So that's my thought on that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's made pretty good work of that uh, piece of um, really hard birch. I'm going to pull a piece of pine out and try it on that. Alright, so uh, I've just played around a little bit with this uh, Sloyd knife, and I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. This is uh, this is green pine. This knife has no excuse here. This is soft, soft wood. And uh, because of that short bevel, I mean, it, it makes it through the wood, but it's not, it's not a complete dream, right? So what this means is, if you're buying this knife, you have to be willing to learn how to sharpen, right? And really, you should be willing to learn how to sharpen no matter what knife you're buying. So, call it a moot point, but you really do have to have experience in reshaping your profile, because this needs to be uh, modified, as far as I'm concerned. I just think with a blade of, uh, of this kind of width, I would make the bevel, gosh, maybe 40 or 30% bigger. Um, you really could go full Scandi and take it all the way to the back here. Um, might be a bit thin of a steel for that, but no, I think it probably could have been done. So, that's a mark against it. But it's not impossibly dull. I mean, it, it's moving through the wood, just taking small chunks at a time. Just have to be patient with it. And let me just reiterate, I am <laughs> I'm the furthest thing from like a bushcrafter, camper, uh, kind of carve in the woods sort of a dude. So I don't want to try and come off as knowing more than I do about these types of tools. I know a lot about carving tools because I work with them every day. I've made my living for the past 16 years with hand carving tools. But this is kind of a new territory to me. And... Beavercraft um, sent me uh, these. They're not paying me, of course, to say anything, of course, but uh, it's not a sponsored type situation. But uh, they did send me these to try out. And um, while I am happy to say that uh, 
if you're starting out in carving, it might not be a bad choice. Um, or I would almost spend the extra dough for a uh, for a higher end blade. You know, something that's uh, going to be really easy out the gate. Unless this is a big unless you're willing to sharpen the blade to reprofile it. Um, you're going to be able to get a decent user experience out of this. But what I don't want you to do is get a knife and uh, try it out. You know, get one from Beavercraft, try it out, and just find that it's not a really great experience for you. Because this is this is a nice experience, right? I'll be right back. But even just looking at this flex cut detail skewed knife, inch and a half blade, it's a very uh, shallow grind, similar to the uh, to the bevel on the Beavercraft. It might be a little bit longer of a bevel, right? So still not ideal, but nonetheless, it's a pleasure to carve with because it really slices through the wood. So I would recommend this blade to anyone who wants to try uh, to learn carving. And you know what? Beavercraft's detail blade, at least the one I got, was really reasonable um, in terms of being sharp, having a flat grind. Um, it's a really great tool. I'm not sure how I feel about the uh, bushcraft knife. Although, if you're trying to skin a deer, maybe you're um, kind of out there in the wilderness and you're just cutting string, this might be a nice thing just to have on you for all kinds of activities because um, this bevel, the shorter bevel, is more durable, it's more uh, hard wearing, so you're gonna be able to do more with it. So It's not uh, altogether a bad idea to have something like that. So anyway, this has been my thought. I haven't really even played with this much yet, but uh, it doesn't uh, seem to be terrible. Again, it's got, you know, it's really short bevel, even shorter bevel than these. So I don't love that about it, but uh, it is sharp on both sides. That's kind of nice. And so, yeah, again, these are all usable tools. I'm fairly impressed with the axe uh, so far. You know, it's, again, it's not really seeing a huge amount of wear. You know, it's obviously been tempered, so that's good. It's, uh, it's a tentative go for me on the axe. I like the axe. Uh, it's got a nice weight to it, balance. The handle might be a tiny bit small. I've got big, big hands, right? Uh, at least I've got big palms. So it kind of feels a little bit uh, more comfortable up at the throat. Like I like grabbing it here, but um, well, you're not going to get the maximum power out of the tool grabbing it at the throat. So yeah, a little bit of a bummer, but uh, it's actually surprisingly nice for the money. The temper is pretty good on it, uh, at least for my testing. I've de definitely got to put it through its paces a bit more. Uh, but as far as a quick unboxing and test, you know, it's not too shabby. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you want to learn more about the type of carving that I do for a living, uh, realistic face carving, uh, check out the online uh, school that I started just three years ago now. Over 77 plus projects there, uh, videos rather. Uh, projects ranging from realistic male to female to some wildlife relief and a bunch of other fun whittles as well. So check that out. See you guys.